How we doing? Y'all came out on a Tuesday afternoon. It must be important. How you doing? I'm the Southern California organizer for Food and Water Watch. We champion healthy food and clean water for all. We stand up to corporations that put profits before people. And we advocate for a democracy that improves people's lives and protects our environment. And in California, we currently have a serious problem with the quality of our food, the safety of the water we use to grow it, and the resolve of our government to rein in alarming corporate abuse. In the past 20 years, our government has allowed the Chevron Oil Company to sell its byproduct water, water it pumps from oil wells to Central Valley water districts where it ends up on our crops. Does that sound right? No! And even though this has been going on for over 20 years, there has not been a single independent analysis of this water that examines the more than 450 chemical compounds used to get oil out of the ground. Does that sound right? No! There have been no studies on how this water impacts the aquifers below the fields or how it impacts the farm workers who have to come in contact with this on a daily basis. Does that sound right? No! In 2016, over 300,000 people asked Governor Brown to end this practice. And what we have heard from his office in Sacramento was resounding silence. Oh, boo. Oh, boo. Now we've seen two terms of Brown for some of us, we've seen four, and we don't expect him to be a leader against the oil industry. They are one of the top contributors to his campaigns and to his political efforts. That's why we're here today. We are now looking to the very companies that are profiting from using this water and we are demanding that they end this practice. Today we're delivering over one or almost 100,000 pledges from people across the country to the wonderful company's door. We have pledged not to buy their products until they and the governor put an end to this shameful practice. Yeah! yeah. Woo! And we believe the wonderful company to be an egregious offender precisely because they market their products as wellness foods. Oh. Whether it's Palm Wonderful Juice or their Halo Tangerines, we believe that they have an obligation to the people of this country and to California to stop using this water sourced from oil fields on our food. Yeah! yeah. Yeah. And so I'm proud to stand here today with all of you and with a fierce coalition of organizations who work to collect these pledges and fight every single day for transparency and accountability from our elected officials and corporations. So before we get to the delivery, I want to bring some of our partners up. Um, first person I'd like to bring up is attorney Adam Keats with the Center for Food Safety. Adam's the senior attorney at the Center for Food Safety. His work focuses on water supply and water privatization issues, and particularly agricultural water use. He's the 2016 recipient of the California Lawyer Attorney of the Year Award for his work fighting a development project sprawl here in SoCal. And he's currently litigating against the privatization of a major water bank in Kern County, which is majority held by the billionaire couple that owns the wonderful company, Linda and Stuart Resnick. You can learn more about Adam and his work uh, in National Geographic's new movie, Water and Power, a California heist. But right now, I'd like to bring up Adam. Thank you, Walker, and thank you, everybody. It's great to be here. Um, you know, I started my, my career in water law about here, I'd say 10 years ago, in meetings in this building, actually. Uh, so it's sweet justice that I get to come back down here to L.A. and in front of the wonderful company uh, to continue raising our voice and to join you guys in raising your voice against this company, against their practice right now and the way that they're producing food uh, for all of us to consume. So we all know why we're here. Uh, we're here to say that we know full well what it means to water our crops with oil wastewater. Uh, it means chemicals, known and unknown, a lot of them we don't know, being flushed into our rivers and groundwater. It means chemicals, known and unknown, being sprayed onto our food. 
And even if those chemicals might not make it into our bodies, we, we, we're not sure of that because no one knows because there's no testing, uh, we do know that it does get handled and breathed and touched and smelled and tasted by the farm workers who have to pick those fruits and handle those vegetables. Uh, it means that birds and fish and bugs and animals, everything, all the living beings that, that, that use this environment, that's a shared environment, all of those things have to breathe and touch and, and, and taste and, and come in contact with all these chemicals also. Uh, we're here to say that we want nothing to do with this practice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah! We want nothing to do with the watering our, of our food with oil wastewater. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and just as importantly, we want nothing to do with the oil drilling that is creating the toxic water in the first place. Yeah. We're here to say that we know full well that using oil wastewater to grow crops is not water recycling. That's a lie. It's greenwashing. Yeah. The toxic oil industry uses massive amounts of water. Uh, and they, they create massive amounts of wastewater, toxic wastewater. They're looking for something to do with it. They're looking for a mechanism by which they can get an excuse for why they're using all this water and what they're doing with all this water. And they found a willing partner in the wonderful company. Oh. And we know the oil company, the oil industry, they're destroying, not only are they destroying our water supplies, not only are they using up our water supplies, they're destroying our planet through oil, through, through global warming. We all know that. We want nothing to do with it. Right. Right. Yes. We're here to say that we know the false logic upon which this whole scheme is based necessarily resulted when our food production system was taken over by corporations. Yeah. yeah. Corporations like the Wonderful Company, oh, who, who kicked out and bought off our family farms and our community agriculture and replaced them with a model of agriculture that is destructive to this planet, destructive to humans, and destructive to the environment. Yeah. yeah. And we're here to say that we know that there's something that we can do about all of this. We know we can stop buying these big ag products. We know that we can support family farming practices that do, that do good and not harm. Yeah. We know that we can uh, support farming practices that work in harmony with the environment rather than in competition with it. Yes. And that we, farming practices that support farm workers with real living wages in a safe and healthy workplace. Yeah. Now, I'm a lawyer, I'm a lawyer by trade, I've been litigating against companies like the Wonderful Company and for a long time now, and I'm here to tell everyone here there are some times when lawyering and lawsuits work, and there are some times when they don't work. And unfortunately, with this situation, with this toxic oil and wastewater being used on crops grown in California, we're having a very difficult time accomplishing what we want to accomplish with lawsuits. And so this is where the people need to come up. This is where people are going to step up. Because the, the unfortunate reality is that we're dealing with two pretty powerful industries, the oil industry and big ag. This is an unholy alliance that is a conspiracy to keep us from being able to accomplish our goals. The one tool that we have and the most effective tool that we have is to stop buying the products being produced by these companies. So I'm going to work and my group's going to work and all the lawyers on this, on this issue are going to be working as hard as we can to come up with a litigation fix on this thing. But while we're doing that and until we, it, 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 it might never work while we're doing it. The most effective thing that we can do is to stop buying the products. And so I'm I'm pledging today, and I hope we all pledge, to stop to stop buying products in the wonderful company until they pledge to stop using oil and wastewater on their produce. Yeah! yeah. So we're here to say no to Big Ag and its toxic stew of unsustainable crops, wasteful water use, and codependency with the worst and most harmful industry on this planet, the oil industry. We're here to say no to Big Ag polluting the environment, poisoning our food, and harming our farm workers. Thank you very much. Let's hear it again for Adam. We need attorneys to self-sacrifice and do the work that so many won't and can't. The next person I'd like to bring up is, is greatly responsible for making sure as many people as possible know about this issue. Her name is Kelly Soto. She is the list growth specialist for Daily Coast. She has dedicated her life to racial and social justice and has been involved in a variety of spaces doing work focused on reproductive health and social justice. Whether it's clinical research or policy advocacy and organizing, and from education and capacity building to consulting for racial justice organizations, Kelly's dedication to underserved communities radiates as the underlying motivation for her life's work, and we feel really uh, just pleased and proud to have her here today. So, Kelly. Wow, that is the warmest welcome I've ever had. Sorry, I'm a little short, so I'm like, um, Thank you all to 
all of you who've come out first and foremost um, and taking time out of your day. This is such an important action. Um, I'm so pleased and proud to be able to stand here with you um, and support our partnering organization, Food and Water Watch. This is such a huge issue, um, one that I really didn't know about uh, before coming to work at Daily Coast. So if I didn't know about it, you know, I'm sure that many people didn't. Um, there needs to be more transparency. And it's frankly ridiculous that we have to gather together and hold signs that say, hey, can you not poison us? Can you yeah. not yeah. put yeah. oil into the food that we eat, that we yeah. feed our children? This is ridiculous. This is 2017, but we're gonna keep fighting. We, we have to, we have to take this approach of intersectionality um, and we have to recognize that your struggle is mine and we are not working in silos. I'm Ooh. not, as Walker was saying, I, my work um, and my volunteerism has always focused on uh, racial justice, reproductive justice, women's justice, gender issues. Um, and this is an intersectional issue. You can't look at environmental justice and think, oh, okay, well, that's different. Or you can't look at Black Lives Matter and think, all right, well, that doesn't apply to me. No, everything applies here. So again, thank you all for coming out. On behalf of Daily Coast, I'm so proud to be able to be here. Um, and support Food and Water Watch to stand in solidarity with all of you and to tell the wonderful company and other companies because we know it's not just them that are, that are doing this practice of using dirty water on the food that we eat, that this is not okay, that human lives matter more than money. Yeah. Woo! Thank you. Woo! 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 Thank you, Kelly. It's so funny, when I first started out as an activist, I, um, I read my news on Daily Coast, and now it's just such an interesting turn of events in my life that I also get to work with them. Um, our next and last speaker uh, is pretty renowned throughout California. Uh, she's built her career being what she considers a climate hawk. That is someone who is adamant and dedicated to fighting for climate justice and solutions to climate change. R.L. Miller is the president of Climate Hawks Vote Political Action, the Climate Hawks Vote Super PAC. She is also the elected chair of the California Democratic Party's Environmental Caucus. She's an active climate blogger and organizer, and her past work has included exposing the politics of climate denial and opposing fracking for oil in California. I'd like to introduce R.L. Miller. Thank you. This one is sort of personal for me. I grew up in the San Fernando Valley in one of those two bedroom, three bedroom houses with a little pool in a middle class community with the best tangerine tree in the known world in my backyard. And this tree produced the most abundant, delicious tangerines I'd ever had in my life. And it produced them twice a year. And so I grew up believing the tangerines were God's fruit. And now I'm finding that what is being grown and sold in the stores is being poisoned by oily wastewater. Ooh, and it's ooh. coming from the same thing that I've dedicated my life to fighting, which is climate change. California is the nation's third largest oil producer. Ooh. And we all know that Jerry Brown, our governor, claims to be a climate hawk. He won't do anything about oil production. He won't do anything about the fracking. And I've been campaigning against him for a number of years with a simple message. Climate leaders don't frack. Yeah! Because if you don't frack, you don't have a ton of wastewater yeah. to get rid of. And if you don't have a ton of wastewater to get rid of, you don't participate in some sort of garbage greenwashing scheme where you tell big ag that it's okay because it's been cleaned and so you can put it on the crops and it'll be perfectly safe and it won't poison the fruit that's being sold in our stores. Yeah. Yeah? Woo. Yeah. Woo. yeah. All about that. Woo. Yeah. But really, it's a lot more simple than that. Climate leaders don't frack. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Can you say that with me? Yeah. Climate leaders don't frack. And they don't dump their wastewater on our food. Woo! Okay? Yeah! Not that yeah. hard, folks. <laughs> One more time, and then I'm going to turn it back over to Walker. Climate, Climate leaders don't frack. Thanks. Woo! Thank you, Kelly.
URL. All right, I want to try out some chanting. Uh, we're about to get on the move here, folks, and all we have to do is follow the leadership of our wonderful produce. Because we're trying to get you your attention. Right right uh, yeah, we're trying to get your attention. Wake up, Fred. Yeah. All right, why are we blocking the sidewalk? All right, why are we blocking the sidewalk? We're blocking the sidewalk because we need to give almost 100,000 pledges to the billionaire couple behind the wonderful corporation, which is using oil field water, uh, wastewater to irrigate the crops that end up on our plates in California. And that ain't yes. right, right? No. Yeah. That ain't right. To them we say, don't pollute Luke. our fruit. Luke. Don't, 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 don't pollute our, our fruit. fruit. Hey, what? Don't pollute our fruit. One more time. Don't pollute our fruit. All right, thank you. If y'all want to grab the petition boxes, we'll follow you to the doors. Someone take this, please. Woo! We're going to close this up and take it to the, uh, just follow them. We're taking it to the doors. Thank you. 